Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> How are you guys today? Just gonna talk a quick minute. I am bringing you the Sweet as a Peach Bundle. It's a really awesome, awesome sweet. It is in the annual catalog, May to April. And it is located on page 60 and 61. It's an entire suite. It has a bundle, which is what I'm using today, the stamp set and the dies. It also has coordinating cardstock. I mean, not cardstock, designer series paper, which is located on page 134 right here. And it is on sale from 11.50 to 9.78 until the beginning of August. So the whole month of July, you can get that for a discount, 15% off. The um, Hero Peach bundle is just so awesome. I've been showcasing it on my blog, inkyhandswarmhearts.com. You can go there all week, starting Sunday. I have been doing a series on it and you can um, catch up to those. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And we can begin. I will be making this card today and it is a double slider card and by that it means that when I pull this out it slides up and another piece slides up so there's two sliders and this holds a little gift card from Target. So I, I've tucked that in there and then you can close it just like that and I'm going to show you how to make that today. I hope you like it. So we're going to be using the Sweet as a Peach bundle and the dies to make this. All right, let's get started. So these are the colors of ink we're going to be using today. Calypso Coral, Pale Papaya, Pear Pizzazz, and Early Espresso. And let's get the stamping part out of the way. So we do have a base and we do have um, this little piece that pulls out right here that has to be stamped on. So we're gonna stamp this piece and then we're gonna use this piece here and we're gonna stamp all these cute peaches and flowers and we're gonna stamp this words right here on this scrap. We're gonna stamp this happy birthday right here and we're gonna add some ink to this piece. So these pieces are what needs to be stamped. I'm gonna go ahead and move everything else out of the way temporarily so that we can have room for our stamping and then we'll be ready to go. I'm gonna leave this card out so you guys can see it. And I have to grab a couple punches that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using the Detailed Trio Punch. We're also gonna be using today the classic label punch it was retired but most people already own it so if you don't have it i'm going to show you an alternative that you can use that will give you the exact same result i paired with this stamp set today the stitched rectangle dies and so this piece here was cut with this die, whoops, with this die right here. And if you do not have the classic label punch from Stampin' Up, you can use the smallest long skinny die right here that's in the middle to make the same marks. So I'm gonna explain how we do that. But I'm gonna use this punch today. It's much easier for um, explanation on how to make the card. So, um, but this is a really versatile, basic die set that I use on lots of cards. So definitely check into that if you don't have it yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our stamping done. On this piece here, we're going to be using a piece of pale papaya. Just grabbing some scrap. And I'm using a sponge dauber. And I just wanted to add a little bit of color back behind the peaches. So I have opened this, picked up some color here and just rubbed that onto the back. 
just like that just to give it a little bit more color so it's not so stark you can see it peeking out here from behind the peaches so that is my dauber and those can be purchased at my store they're called stamp um, sponge daubers so that's that piece on here we're going to stamp the words happy birthday and here's our stamp isn't it cute and we're going to use the early espresso so I'm going to make sure I'm not out of the camera because I want to make sure you guys can see this. But I need to bring it a little closer to me so that I can see what I'm stamping. I'm going to ink it up in the early espresso. And then this piece is the leftovers when I made the original card. So there's the happy birthday. So I'll set that aside. This piece here is our Let's Celebrate You. So that's this. We're gonna stamp that on this little strip of paper. Same color, I don't know why I put that away. I'm gonna bring it down here again. Just like that. Oh, I don't like that. Let's try the other side. Luckily, every sheet has two sides, right? Every piece of paper. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have a Nice impression without wobbling it. That one looks awesome. And I'm gonna trim that down, I'll show you. I'm done with that just for a minute. So these two have to be cleaned. I'm gonna use my paper snips. And I'm gonna angle cut, just like this, those pieces. So that's that, right there. All right, on to the next stamping. We're going to stamp our peaches on here. And so to do that, we are going to use the Pale Papaya, and we're also gonna use um, a Calypso Coral dauber to ink up the peach so it has two tones. So we're gonna start with the light Pale Papaya. We're gonna turn the stamp upside down. We're gonna stick our finger in here, grab some Calypso Coral, and I'm just gonna work it around the edge like this. Grab a little more. And this stamp is called a distinctive stamp, which means that it has texture to it. It's not just gonna be your regular, everyday, um, flat color. You'll see when I lift up. See how it has some gradation in color? So we're gonna go ahead and ink that up a little bit more just so that I get the color that I really want for this peach. I'm just patting it on there. So that's good. So we're gonna do one more peach. Before I do that, I need to clean it because I don't want to stick that dark Calypso Coral into my pale papaya. So I'm going to just clean that stamp real well here, ink it back up, and then we're going to grab the Calypso Coral again, give it a little more color, a little bit more dimension, make it look like it's ripening. I'm going to stamp that right above here like that, and we're gonna fill in some color like this. That looks good to me. So there's our two peaches. With this pale papaya, we're also gonna stamp the flowers. So we need to clean this one in a minute. Let me grab the flowers. Here they are, aren't they cute? And I'm gonna stamp it right here like this. So there are those, those need to be cleaned. And we are going to stamp the centers of those flowers in some early espresso. It's this itty bitty tiny stamp here. We're gonna stamp those centers like that. Now this needs to be cleaned. <laughs> One more time, we're gonna use the hair pizzazz. And this time we're gonna use the leaf. So I'm gonna put one over, the, over here and one over here. All right, and that's all the stamping for this piece of paper. I just have to do the background now. And the background is gonna go with Calypso Coral on Calypso Coral. So here's our Calypso Coral ink pad. I'm gonna clean my flowers. 
I'm actually gonna go ahead and clean all the stamps while I have this out. You can see that my um, Simply Chamois is very well loved. The cool thing is that even though it has all this ink on it, it cleans the stamps perfectly. You can't tell on the ones that have pink tone, but this one to the green, see how it's perfectly clean, even these perfectly clean. They just have a little pink tone to them. Let's move this out of the way. And now let's bring in our little piece here, just like that. Oops. It's okay. Hopefully I won't make a mess on myself. So I'm just going to go ahead and move my, my stamp, kind of rotate it around and fill in here with these flowers. I'm just rotating around my piece of paper. Maybe right there. Like that. And one more right here. All right, so then we have a nice background. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And that's all the stamping. Let's clean our stamp and our block since I made a mess on it. <laughs> all right. Make sure my nail is clean. Everything is good. All right, that's all the stamping. Now, I have gone ahead and cut out the shapes already so that we didn't have to wait for me to do that. So I have these done already. So I'm just gonna set that off to the side and we can start <clears throat> putting our card together. So we have all of our pieces. We have our peaches and our three flowers that we stamped with our centers. And we should have two of these. Hopefully I can find the other one. I don't see it right now in front of me. I might have dropped it, but if worse comes to worse, I'll go ahead and cut another one. But I don't know what I have done with it. It's here somewhere. We'll find it. Because <laughs> I definitely need that second piece. Let's see if I dropped it on the floor. Who knows? Who knows what I've done with it? I can definitely make another one. We've already stamped it. I just have to cut it out. But I'm going to wait and see if I can find it first. All right, let's just go ahead and start our card. So this is one of the layers and we also have this balmy blue layer, which is a regular card front size. So we're going to Use our bone folder here and we are going to turn it in like this just like a regular normal card okay make our score mark at the bottom just like that and then this piece is going to be inside and it's going to go in and out looks like i've got ink on myself and i have somehow got ink on my card hopefully I can get that out. There's an eraser here as best I can. Most of it's going to be covered because I have the front layered, but okay, that's better. So we fold it in half. Now we're going to be using a punch called the Classic Label Punch, which I talked to you earlier. But if you do not own this punch, you will use this die right here. And let me punch first and then I'll explain what's next. So I'm going to unlock my punch here and I'm going to bring this to the front and right where this fold is, I'm going to lay the edge of this punch and I'm going to push the punch in as far as it will go. And then I'm going to go ahead and punch. Then I'm going to slide it along the same edge as far as it will go in and as up to this top edge. And when the top edge is even with the side of my punch, I'm going to punch again. So there's the second punch. Now, the reason I punched it first is right here. This is an inch and a half. So if you are using the dies, you're going to measure an inch and a half in, and then you're going to make a pencil mark from the top to the bottom of your card. And then you're going to lay your die. I'll show you. You're going to lay this die along that pencil mark. And then you're going to get your channel. You're just going to cut one out and then shift it up, line it up and cut the second one. That's how I got these pieces here 
is by using this um, die for my first card I used it but then I decided to show it it would be a lot easier for me to show with the punch since most people do own that it's called the classic label punch okay so that is how you do that now we're going to do the same thing on the other side so we're going to flip this put it in as far as we can bring it to that fold and then bring it to the edge of the card on the other end and there we have oops I guess I didn't bring it all the way in let me look I just was a, a hair out there we go all right now we should be lined up here Okay, so there's our punch pieces. All right, next step. This is going to be the front and it's going to cover this part up. Okay, so we're going to layer this designer series paper. I'm going to attach it with some seal and we're going to um, put some right here on the back. And I'm going to attach this designer series paper to this pair of pizzazz. And it has a small edge all the way around, just like that. Okay, so this is going to be the front that's going to cover those holes so that we don't see those. And so we're going to put dimensionals on the back. Got to grab my dimensionals here. I know they're here somewhere. I'm losing everything today. <laughs> all right, here we go. So I'm going to put one in each corner and I'm not going to actually cover it yet, but I'm going to be ready. So this piece is going to be off to the side, just like that waiting to be used. Now, this piece here is what's going to come out of our card like this. Okay. It's the part that's going to slide in and out. So on this back piece, I need to use some tear and tape. Stampin' Up! sells tear and tape and it's a quarter of an inch wide and I really the way I cut this piece of cardstock I didn't leave myself much room so I have this other tear and tape that's much skinnier and I'm going to use it now but in we could have cut the card a little bit smaller and then we could use the quarter inch tear and tape so just keep that in mind when you make yours because I wasn't thinking about the size of the tear and tape when I designed this okay so I'm going to push that down to make sure it's stuck. And that's just going to sit there just like that. Okay. So now you can see that my card is pretty close to those edges, which is why I use the skinnier piece. So this piece, I'm going to let it sit right here on the edge. And I'm going to close this. I'm going to take my Simply Scored. And I'm going to take this piece here of Pale Papaya and I'm gonna lay it in my Simply Scored, and I'm gonna score it at a half inch, just like that. Grab the half inch and score that. That's all I needed to score there. You can do it on your paper trimmer when you cut it out as well. I just prefer the Simply Scored. And we're gonna round the corners of this. As you can see, it's rounded here. So that's what I use this punch for, the detailed trio punch. So this is the part that does the corner rounding. So I'm gonna stick my paper in here and press down those rounded, those two corners. And I'm gonna round these two top corners on here. So I'm gonna round this one and this one, just like that, okay? I think I keep moving my mat. All right, so that's what that punch is for. We're gonna use our bone folder and we are gonna fold this part up just like that. And then this piece is gonna get attached on the inside and we can use our stamp and seal. And once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it in there like that. Now these two pieces have to hold the, this holds the gift card. So I wanna place my gift card in here. And as you can see, I have a little bit of room on either side. So I'm gonna use a wet adhesive. I'm gonna pull my gift card out and out of the way. 
This is our multi-purpose glue and I'm just going to put a little bit on each side and then I'm going to press it down and I'm just going to hold it for a second and let it grab and adhere. And once it's done so, I can go ahead and release it just like that. And that's the pocket that's going to hold my card. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside for right now. All right. So now back to our main card piece. So we have this piece in here and we know that we want this to be right there on the edge. So we're gonna close our card and we're gonna take two dimensionals and they fit perfectly in this spot. And I'm gonna place one right about there and another one, if I can get them apart right about there across from it. It doesn't have to be exact, but that is what is gonna help slide this piece in that channel like this, see? It slides with those dimensionals holding into place. So now I'm gonna remove it for a minute and I'm gonna use a three quarter inch circle punch or any size circle punch that you have. You're just gonna put it in here in the center and you're just gonna press and you just want a little divot to be um, punched out of there. So this is an old Stampin' Up! punch, three quarters of an inch circle. I save all my basic shapes um, when they retire because I still use them for lots of things. But that will allow us to be able to grab that See, we'll have that piece there that we can hold on to, okay? So now we're gonna attach this piece and when we pull this up like this okay we're going to place this on here so that it will show now you can see i decorated this one so i'm going to do that really quickly before i attach this piece on i'm going to decorate the top but you see the mechanism on how it slides back and forth right all right let me pull that out we're going to decorate this piece now i have used some just little extra strips that I had when I was using that um, DSP after I cut down some layers. And when I use um, small things like this, I like to use my um, reverse action tweezers. Stampin' Up! doesn't sell them, but you can get them at any craft store. And I'm gonna go ahead and just attach this down on one side like this. I didn't have a piece that went across the whole length, so I just used two strips. And they're gonna be hidden underneath that happy birthday. So it doesn't really matter. We just wanna make sure we keep that end on there like that, okay? And then let's grab our happy birthday. And this one we can put our seal on. I have something stuck to it. I'm trying to pull that off. I'm watching my daughter's bunny and I think I have a bunny hair on here because he was in here earlier and his hair is everywhere. There we go. <laughs> I don't want that on the card. Okay, so I'm going to stick this down about halfway like that. Jasper wants to be part of the card. Okay, so there we go. So there's my happy birthday. Now this is decorated. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this piece back in and stick my dimensionals in there, okay? So when this comes up, this is what's, these dimensionals are what's gonna hold this piece in place, okay? So bring that to the top, and then we're gonna go ahead and peel the backs off of them. Just like that. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool. It's my favorite thing that I use when I'm using dimensionals. And I'm gonna peel the backs off just like that. Make sure that this is straight. Looks good to me. And we want this to be approximately right there. So we're gonna press that down and then we're gonna slide this back, okay? Now you see how it went all the way down and I can't grab it? To keep that from happening, I'm gonna bring that back up like this and I'm gonna put two dimensionals down here 
to stop this from going any farther than this spot. These dimensionals will butt up against this gift card part and it will stop it from going any farther than I want it to go. So those are in place just like that, see? So now when this goes down, those will hit those dimensionals and they won't go any farther. So my card will always be in that window when it pulls up and down, see? Got that? So now while I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these two pieces off. I'm gonna grab those like this and one more for the other side. Perfect. Get those out of the way. I'm going to make sure that it's even and looking good. It's not sticking to those pieces. Perfect. And go ahead and press those two sides down like so. Let's try the mechanism. Make sure nothing's stuck. Oh, something's stuck. Okay. I think I had it over and on there. So that's why you test it before you press it real hard. So I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna press with my bone folder now. Make sure it's really grabbed onto my cardstock, just like that. Now we should be able to slide up and down without any problem. There we go. All right, just like that. Perfect. We're good, the sides are good. Now we can go ahead and attach this layer to the top. So we'll pull these dimensionals off that are the stopper. And then we will pull these dimensionals off that are on the four corners. Just like that. Oops. <laughs> the cap is rolling around. All right, so now we're gonna cover this piece oh lord have mercy i wasn't thinking when i stuck that down there all right let's grab another dimensional and put it in its place there we go don't do what i did all right it's hard because i'm working on like a small surface and i want you to see everything all right so now we're going to go ahead and place this layer which will cover that up you won't see the mechanism. That looks pretty good. So now you're gonna pull up and back down and up. And you just have to get it going after a few pulls up and down and I just play with it before I send it out. But yeah, there we go. We got a good mechanism there. Good job. All right, so there we go. So now let's go ahead and put the card in there. Tuck it in and slide that down just like that. Perfect. All right. Now comes our decorative part, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adhere this onto the front. So let's go ahead and attach that right there in the center. Perfect. Next, we're going to do, there's a branch here in the corner. And so I'm going to grab this branch and my multi-purpose glue. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on the branch legs here and one here at the bottom. Perfect, grab my tweezer. And I'm going to turn it this way just so that I can place it down. So my branch is going to be coming from that corner right here like this, okay? The first peach is going to be attached right here on the side, but it's pretty big, so I don't need to use the wet glue. I'm going to go ahead and use my seal. And I am going to position it approximately like this. That looks good to me. And then we will use the wet glue for this leaf. And the leaf is going to come this way. So we're going to go ahead and attach it like this. Just put a little bit of adhesive. Grab my tweezers. I always use these when I use wet glue or small pieces. And I'm going to make sure that that is where I want it and press it down. That looks pretty good, right? 
I think so. The nice thing about wet glue is that there's some wiggle room so you can move it around. I'm happy with that. All right, our other peach is gonna be popped up, so I'm gonna grab some dimensionals. And I have some pieces here that are um, already finished, so I'm just gonna use those. I like to cut those and um, use them on my larger pieces like this. And this one's gonna have the leaf behind it and the leaves are gonna be going this way. So I'm gonna put some adhesive on the front of the bottom part of this stem and I'm also gonna drag it down and a little bit onto this part of the leaf because that is tucked under the peach, just like this. That will hold it in place. I just have to hold it and give it a little pressure. Perfect. So this peach is ready whenever it's time to glue it down. We're gonna glue some of the flowers down first. So we're gonna start with this larger flower. And I'm gonna grab my tweezers. And I'm gonna hold this about where I'm gonna put this peach so that I know where to put my um, where to put my flower. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck the flower right here like so. Wanna see a little bit of that branch. I think that looks good right there. Now we can move this one out of the way. And we're gonna tuck a smaller one in this corner here. Oops. We'll tuck that kind of under that peach leaf like this. Place that down. Now we can go ahead and pull the backs off of this. I'm gonna use the take your pick tool. I really like it, it helps me get the um, backs off and they don't get stuck all over my craft room. So I definitely use this all the time. We're gonna go ahead and attach this peach and we're gonna kind of figure out where we want it to overlap. We want both of the flowers to show. That looks pretty good, like that. And then we're gonna add one more dimensional on the back of this flower. If I can find them, here they are. I've thrown them around. I'm gonna use one of these bigger ones here. And then we're gonna grab the back off. And then this one's gonna be attached right around here. That looks good. And then we're gonna put some of these small flowers that I have die cut out. We're gonna kind of scatter those around. I think they're really pretty. Gonna put a dot of glue on each of them. And I'm gonna use my tweezers. We're gonna put one on this flower. One, I mean flower, one on this peach. <laughs> one on this peach. And then we're gonna stick this last one back here. This looks good. Whoops, if it stays stuck. That looks awesome. So now comes our bow. We're gonna go ahead and tie that. I have a strip here of ribbon. I'm gonna make two bunny ears just like that. I'm gonna cross them. And the one that's on top, I'm gonna tuck it through the back here and feed it through this loop. Hopefully it will fit. My fingers aren't in the way. Of course, you know, it's always harder to tie on camera than it is when you're doing it yourself at home. So there it is, I grabbed a hold of it. I'm gonna release and let this tail right here hang down. And I'm gonna pull that bunny ear through. And I'm not gonna pull it real hard because I'm gonna mess with these ends and get them to look how I want them to by kind of pulling on them like that. That looks pretty good. Let's see what side I like better. I like this one, I think. I'm gonna make this one a hair shorter. Okay, and then we're gonna use our ribbon scissors because you can see that it's uneven. It always happens that way. They're basically paper snips that I've designated to use just for ribbon by putting that little charm on there. I know that it's my ones that I use just for ribbon. And I'm just gonna trim those edges. I'm gonna make this one a little bit shorter. That looks good. Let's get rid of these ends. And we're gonna use a mini glue dot, which they're on this roll. So I'm gonna grab one. I'm gonna stick the, the bow right here in this corner. That looks awesome. We have to do our words. 
So let's get that done. Here they are. And I'm going to use a strip of this um, and tuck it behind a portion. I'm just snipping it off of my piece here. I'm going to pull the back off. This is why I like to use the take your pick tool. I struggle. We're only going to put it on this side. And on the other end, we're going to put some of this wet glue. I'm going to use my tweezers. Well, first I'm going to pull the backs off. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my tweezers and I'm going to position. The reason that I did that was this is going to lay on my peach. So I don't need a dimensional there and I want it to stay glued down. So that's why I put the wet glue. And then this part here has the dimensional so that it's lifted up like that. So there is that part. The last final, final step is going to be to decorate it with the pretty, pretty jewels. And I've used the Artistry Blooms sequence. I'm using the dark um, orange ones. They come in four different colors. I'm going to use this one. And when you use these, you want to use the pointy end of your take your pick tool. And the reason being is they're kind of delicate. They have an iridescent top. So you don't want to rub it off with the putty end. So I'm going to grab one little one and one big one. That looks awesome. And we'll put another one of these big ones up here. Make sure I don't have a fuzz on there. Looks like I do. There we go. Perfect. And then that one is stuck there. They already have adhesive on the back of them, which is nice. And so as you can see, I really do love these. I use all the different colors of these. I keep them in a little bag. When you buy them, they come in a cardboard piece like this. And so when you pull them out, I don't like them to get caught on other, but they're Artistry Bloom adhesive back sequins. So I just keep them in a baggie. And let's move everything out of the way, cap my glue, clear this area so that you guys can see it all pretty. And then we will be done. Let's move the take your pick tool. All right, my bone folder. So here's the open version. And here's the one we just made. Open, close. Open. There are the cards. I have been working, like I said, with this set all week. I have made quite a few cards with it. Um, you can go to the blog and see all of them. This is the one. This was um, for Simple Stamping Sunday. I always show you how to do a very simple card when you don't own that many products and then how to step it up when you start getting a few more. And then when you have a lot of more things and you're an avid stamper, you like to have lots of stuff. This was my Mystery Monday. It was a swap card. If you join my team, we do lots of swaps and this is one of those. This was my um, Facebook Live on Tuesday. This was Thursdays. And then this was Case the Catalog. I took an image out of the catalog and I made it look like this. So you can see you have a variety of ideas for using this beautiful peach stamp set. I hope that you enjoy it. If you'd like to purchase um, anything from my catalog and you order by July 3rd, you're going to use this host code. If not, you can go to inkyhandswarmhearts.com and look for the current host code. It's always on the sidebar on the computer and on mobile. Just scroll to the bottom. You'll see an image that says um, host code and that'll be the current host code for you to use. Um, to shop, you go to inkyhandswarmhearts.com and shop with me is at the top in the menu. Just click that. It takes you straight to my store. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message, a comment on my blog. I would greatly appreciate it. And thanks for um, being with me today. Subscribe to my channel. I'm relatively new to YouTube. And um, if you don't mind asking your friends to help me out, I would appreciate that so I can get some likes and some subscribers to my channel. Thank you again for um, tuning in. And I hope that you liked today's card with our double slider. Bye.